gal welcome to the vlog thank you so much for clicking on this video i decided to kind of just document my meals and like foodie things that i did once i got back from traveling for two weeks i think it's so fascinating kind of like watching get back to routine vlogs and while i didn't really film any of that i did kind of of course do a little bit of like meal prep and just freezer fridge pantry clean out that was like a huge goal of mine when i came back from florida which was my last video i like hate odds and ends i hate accumulation in my freezer and as you guys know i like try to pump out my recipes as fast as possible and try to come up with as many recipes as possible and sometimes I can't eat them all before they're gonna go bad or before I have to make the next ones. So I sometimes just chuck them in the freezer and so that's why I like came home and my mission was cleaning out the fridge and the freezer and a lot of my odds and ends and stuff like that. So I definitely started off with a lot of meal prep and just getting back to like simple eating and simple meals. I made a nice like pesto chicken with a simple pesto salad. I love using those kinds of vegetables because you don't have to even cook them. It's kind of like my riff off of a traditional like Greek salad. So I did lots of different styles of meal prep. So I just had a lot of fun for the first few days. When I got back from Florida, just testing out and cleaning out recipes and trying new things and coming up with ideas. And I kind of just, instead of pressuring myself when I got home from Florida to come up with this big uh, recipe video, which I'm so overdue. I'm gonna get back to recipe videos. I promise the next video will be a recipe video. I know I haven't posted one for a while now. I just didn't want to give too much pressure on myself to like immediately jump back into it. I kind of just wanted to feel myself out, feel out just getting back into a routine before I really pushed myself creativity wise. So I kind of just let the creativity come to me throughout the past week or two, kind of just coming up with recipes and ideas and just snacking on what felt good and kind of letting go and and cleaning up my odds and ends so it was a good kind of refresh restart that whole thing <laughs> lemon cream black raspberry olive oil muffin. I'm continuing the series of cleaning out my fridge and my freezer. So it's a beautiful spring day. It's almost 75 degrees, so it kind of almost feels like summer. And I've been missing my nonna, my grandma, a lot lately. One of her most amazing meals ever is zucchini with pasta. And today I wanted to make a rip off of that. I know you're so sick and tired of pesto. I am too. What happened is I made a whole roasted garlic clove for that white bean artichoke dip a couple of videos back and then I had that rest of the rest the, the rest of the roasted garlic and I put it in a massive batch of pesto but then I also did a creamy pesto which I'm still trying to like defrost here all it is is just ricotta whipped with pesto to make a creamy velvety sauce cheesy sauce delicious sauce this is a flavor bomb that I have ready and prepped to go for today's like 30 minute meal I prepped another flavor bomb for this 30 minute meal. I'm so excited about, it turned out absolutely incredible. And the reason I thought about this is I made a brown butter sage whipped compound butter in uh, the fall and kind of thought it would be a great flavor bomb staple through the fall and through the winter. When you have produce, pasta, grains, breads, and then you have your proteins, you, ha you have all these ing amazing ingredients, but they need insane flavor to bring the meal together. The way to make an amazing meal is always a sauce. You guys have heard me say this a million times, but I made this incredible flavor bomb. It is a whipped compound butter with sumac, saffron, and citrus, along with salt, smoked paprika. Oh, I also put thyme, because everything always needs, in my opinion, always needs an herb as well to round it out. So I made this incredible whipped butter and it will last on your counter for like two or three days whipped and then you can obviously keep it in the fridge and i love to roll it up like this like a little piece of candy and parchment and that way you can cut like nice medallions out of it to make this a like late spring all summer long staple is genius because this goes incredible on fish as well as other proteins like chicken to melt this and cook and saute up some beans some white beans or something like that or garbanzo beans in this and kind of toast them in here i'm 
I'm gonna toast today some grains in it and then cook it. Spread it on crostini and make these yummy crostini. You can spread it on your toast. Any way you use butter, but now you have an insane flavor bomb of butter. The variations are endless of how much fun you could have with a compound butter. I think it's so amazing. So to make this a quick 30 minute meal, because now that I have my two flavor bombs ready to go, the sauce and the flavors of cooking, I'm co cooking three different kind of components here. So starting off with the grains, um, doing a fridge and pantry clean out. I have literally less than a fourth a cup of one of my favorite grains, barley. I thought I'd mix it with my very favorite grain, which is farro. It is just so nutty and chewy. Don't get me wrong, barley is too, but this, this is just, oh, I love this grain. Not gluten-free though, so if you wanted to do this with quinoa, so I'm just gonna toast the grains in a little bit of the whipped butter. And then I have some broth here. You could use water. I just love to add as much flair, flair, as much flavor every layer as possible when cooking. You gotta think of layers and layers of flavor. And then I'm gonna make some sauteed zucchini just like my nonna makes it. And so I was inspired to make this dish because like I said, I was craving some summer. These zucchini are adorable. They look so much like the zucchini I find in Europe. The zucchini I find in America is horrible. It has no flavor. So I find that a lot of Americans hate zucchini and I don't blame them because it tastes like water. And I feel like people like really big zucchinis. And in Italy, my grandma always, my nonna always picks the really tiny zucchini that really look like they're very flavorful. They're compact with a lot of flavor. I'm gonna stop this zucchini with a little bit of onion that I have prepped here. And then I have the secret ingredient that my nonna always uses, which is bouillon or vegetable or chicken broth base. Just a teaspoon of this kind of cooked in with olive oil while the zucchini and the onion are softening and cooking. It just adds this layer of flavor that I can't describe and it's so nostalgic because my mom makes it the same way too. But you really only need like a fourth a teaspoon. This stuff is so concentrated. I already mixed a teaspoon of it with a cup of super hot water to make the broth. So I thought I had it out, so why not use it to cook the zucchini? And the very last portion of the meal is going to be something I've never tried before and I was intrigued at first because it was a great price. It was this seafood blend from Trader Joe's. It was frozen shrimp, calamari, and bay scallops, which I love all of those seafood um, options. I did defrost them, I'm gonna rinse them, pat them super dry, but reading the back of it, which I should have done, Farm shrimp, product of Vietnam, wild scallops, and squid. They're all from Vietnam, and it's just like so hard to eat fish and just any food right now. It's really high quality, I feel like. It's always from so far away, which is so unsustainable. So I'm gonna try out this seafood blend. Hopefully it's good. I'm gonna saute them in some more of this butter, as well as uh, probably crushed garlic cloves. And then in the butter, I use the zest of one lime and one lemon, so I'm just gonna cut those up and squeeze that all over the seafood because I think seafood always needs an abundant amount of citrus, in my opinion. I'm gonna pull the zucchini from the pan and use that same pan to cook the seafood. The one thing I'm missing today is wine, <laughs> but um, it'll still turn out delicious. And when you don't have wine, just use a little bit of broth to help deglaze the pan. Um, it really does the trick. And if you want that winey flavor, use a little bit of white vinegar, white wine vinegar, that always does the trick as well, or red wine vinegar. A nice, light, and delicious Mediterranean seafood meal. Great for the summertime. So, the farro is incredible. Pat myself on the back for that. While the zucchini didn't have any flavor, sad. The way I cooked it was very reminiscent of the way my mom and my nonna made it. And so, zucchini is delicious. This seafood is horrible. Mm. Never, ever, ever going to buy that from Trader Joe's again. When I saw the price, I knew it was too good to be true. First of all, I should have been a more smart cook than that to understand that that squid would cook so much faster than the scallops and the shrimp. They do not cook at the same rate. They're totally different types of seafood. So the squid was utterly overcooked. I really wanted it to work. I'm glad I tried it, but this isn't it. Dude, the seafood didn't even really grasp any of the flavor of the butter, which I think partially is this pan. As amazing and non-stick as this pan is, it gives no sear. So I do love caraway pans and I'm so grateful to have like a discount code with them. I need to get another um, really good steel pan to really get that good sear and develop some good flavor. Mm. Thank God for the creamy pesto to cover up the rubberiness of the seafood. Oh well, can't win them all. Also, just because I had time today before I made that little seafood meal, I made more almond strawberry protein bars. Turned out even more beautiful this time. So I'm gonna try to cut them evenly because I never cut the bars evenly. I'm telling you guys, 
This is my favorite recipe for protein bars. So simple, so easy to make. I love them. They always come out super chewy, a little bit gooey, so they're better to be stored in the fridge for sure. But they also can last like a day outside of the fridge if you're traveling or something like that. Seriously, such simple ingredients. Literally like six ingredients go into these bars. You can make them your own. You could add different variations for sure. I might use like another type of dehydrated fruit. You could also use dried fruit. I just like the texture of the dehydrated fruit and all of this because they're already so chewy and gooey from like the batter because of the like almond butter and honey and protein powder that kind of makes it chewy and gooey. So the nice uh, crunch of the dehydrated strawberries are really nice and I just love the color it kind of gives. So I'm gonna try to cut these up because they're super beautiful and they're my favorite breakfast at the moment. So this is more so just kind of like, not necessarily a fridge or pantry clean out, but this is a meal prep thing that I absolutely love to do. So the last time we talked, I was making the frozen seafood blend from Trader Joe's. And I also picked up this Chilean fish hake. Wild caught, we always like wild caught for sure. From Chile, defrosted, very cheap, Googled, said it was a high quality type of fish. We're gonna squeeze some lemon on it because I never ever ever eat seafood without lemon. Zest queen. I'm trying to be very optimistic here. I'm gonna just eat it off the pan right now because I'm doing a test test, test test, taste test. Mmm, already don't like that the skin doesn't come off. Because it was frozen, it's like more cemented on, if that makes sense. All right, I'm just gonna try this piece right here. Mmm, the fish is good. Insanely dry fish. This is a very, 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 very dry fish. It tastes a lot like swordfish. It's dense and flaky and dry. But for the price, and for being wild caught, it's good. Pro tip, when you cook fish in your home, and you're like, Caroline, now it smells like fish in my home. Turn the oven on and bake off some cookies. I decided to remake the pistachio cookies that I tested out for Easter. Strawberry pistachio white chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I resisted from adding lemon zest. I really, really, really wanted to add lemon zest to this, but I also just wanted to try to make sure that the pistachio shined through. I feel like with the lemon, it would have just overtaken the pistachio flavors. So I have the cookies here and they're beautiful. But this is a great hack if you hate cooking fish at home. Treat yourself to a dessert after because baking something so fragrant like cookies will totally overtake the entire house smell of fish. I changed a few things. I lowered the butter amount and I definitely lowered the pistachio butter amount as well because they were so, so thin and I like a really thick, chewy cookie. And obviously I added in the strawberries because I wanted, one, we're moving into summer, so I wanted a like summery vibe to these cookies. Two, I just had so much dehydrated strawberries left over from making those uh, protein bars that I, granola bars that I love to make so, so much. And lastly, it added some color. It literally just came to me when I was getting ready to make these cookies. We love creativity. So I'm gonna bake a few of these off. Hopefully they turn out. So it turns out the best thing that I made in April was the baklava granola. It's only May 8th and I'm telling you these are the best cookies I've ever made in my life. They're not too sweet the right balance of tartness, berryness from the strawberries, the nuttiness from the pistachios, the creamy, super sweet white chocolate. They're thick, just like I wanted them to be, much thicker. So they're super crunchy on the outside, but so chewy on the inside, which is my dream cookie, is a really crunchy cookie, yet chewy cookie, thick cookie, loaded with mix-ins. Every bite, you're getting pistachio, white chocolate, berry, so many textures. It is so worth it to grind your own pistachios and make your own pistachio butter for this recipe. This is the best. I'm so glad I retested it. Fabulous. It is so good. The next day, <laughs> I'm about to run out the door, but I just stopped my morning right now to make my protein coffee. She's just the right amount of strength. And I said, you know what? I deserve a bite of cookie. And they're just, even the next day, they're so thick and so chewy. Oh God. And the coffee to go with. It's the simple things. It's the sun shining. It's putting on a cute outfit. It's a delicious bite of 
scrumptious goodness with such wholesome high quality ingredients that fills the soul and the body in moderation it's going outside and being in the world it's it's the little little things you, you guys you know me i love a pastry with my coffee it is a habit i'll never give up and i tried these a few weeks ago not the ginger kind the regular kind and they were so delicious because they're the perfect mix of salty and sweet and buttery and so yeah this has just been a huge snack for me lately with now stick with me here with a bit of homemade preserves aka jam black raspberry this is my favorite flavor ever i love black raspberry my mom makes the best black raspberry jam we're almost to berry picking season so i put a little bit of black raspberry jam smear it all over the ginger cracker and because ginger is such a like a peppery spice something that goes so well with this for a little bit of protein and just variation a little bit of salt parmigiano i have a chunk of parmigiano here I have this obsession with salty and sweet, so I'm gonna take this sliver of parmigiano and put it right on top of the cracker with the jam, and the peppery ginger complements the salty parmigiano and then the really sweet berry jam, and it almost the pepper ginger kind of flavor with the parmigiano, reminds me of cacio e pepe. Salty, fruity, sweet, spicy, nutty. Mm, mm, mm. messy so messy this is seriously one of my favorite obsessions snacks right now don't knock it until you try it it's really good all right so on that note i'm gonna go run some errands just got back from grocery shopping it's so hot and gorgeous outside so for my brother's birthday tomorrow i am making classic roman this is my like family's mac and cheese family dinner night like the one thing that like we grew up eating was carbonara we are a true roman family <laughs> we love our carbonara so we break the rules authentically it's guanciale but it's so fatty and i like a little meat to my bite of porky goodness so i got a nice thick guy of pancetta and then i'm also making him tiramisu but i'm making a very special fun tiramisu i'm making a pistacchio pistachio tiramisu so i got some imported um mascarpone we have like an italian grocery store near my whole foods and trader joe's area so got some mascarpone it's gonna whip up a tiramisu right now because it should sit 24 hours in my opinion beforehand so i got insanely insanely good eggs because not only am i making carbonara which is basically raw eggs i'm making tiramisu which is basically raw eggs and then i'm also making homemade pasta We'll get to that, but that's basically raw eggs. Semolina flour, because like I said, I'm making homemade pasta. You can't make tiramisu without ladyfingers. The homemade ravioli that I'm making, I'm making two versions. I'm making a pancetta ricotta filling, so a nice meaty one, and then I'm gonna make a lemon basil ricotta filling. So I got some espresso to dip the ladyfingers in for the pistacchio tiramisu. I know I'm so annoying, I'm like, Jada, pistacchio, pistachio tiramisu. I'm really worried about this. I got some cantaloupe. No smell, usually cantaloupe has a smell. So the menu tomorrow for my brother's birthday is prosciutto and melon, arugula, parmesan salad, carbonara, and then tiramisu. So hopefully it all goes well. Uh, ricotta whole milk for the ricotta ravioli. Sweetened condensed milk because for the pistachio tiramisu, I'm going to make a pistachio cream. That's bag one. Bag two, I got freshly cut prosciutto di parma. Heavy cream for the strawberry dessert that I'm making for Mother's Day. This just because I'm an animal for greens, so I needed to restock on greens. Like I said, I'm making an arugula, olive oil, lemon, and Parmesan salad tomorrow. It's literally all the ingredients that go in it. My favorite fruit is in season and on sales. So these are yellow champagne mangoes. I think these have so much more flavor and are so much more delicious than the red and green ones. Highly recommend champagne mangoes, strawberries. And now I'm gonna get to making the pistachio tiramisu. 
So to start off the pistachio tiramisu, I needed to make the pistachio cream. So I had that leftover pistachio nut butter that I had ground up for the cookies and I just stirred that in with a lot of sweetened condensed milk. I could have also added some heavy cream here too to kind of thin it out and not make it so almost like candy-like, but it was absolutely delicious and it made a super natural minimal ingredient kind of pistachio cream because you can find a lot of pistachio creams online similar to, similar to like Nutella and the ingredients in how they make it but i just thought this would be a better version of it and it tasted incredible so for the tiramisu itself i made a super traditional very italian tiramisu with just separating the eggs so whipping up the whites until they form stiff peaks and then you whip the sugar in with the yolks until the sugar dissolves and you create a light creamy um, pale color and then you fold in so that's kind of just cutting the mascarpone and slowly folding it in to that uh, yolk and sugar mixture then I folded in a lot of the pistachio cream it tinted it the most slight like goldeny green color you can see the specks of pistachio which I love it made it super beautiful and then lastly you fold in the whipped egg whites that were at stiff peaks trying to make sure that you're keeping as much air in the cream as possible it will feel a little bit loose but that's why I say I want it to like sit for at least 24 hours because when it sits for a while that cream really firms back up and creates that you know traditional thick tiramisu cream and then this is optional it just made it so much more amazing was swirling in a lot of that pistachio cream into um, the tiramisu cream and that way you're just getting uh, bites throughout of just straight up pistachio cream and it just intensifies the pistachio flavor um, a lot more because I will say the pistachio flavor wasn't so strong in the tiramisu cream by itself so the swirls not only added a decorative touch but also just amplified the flavor. The thing you could do as well is maybe add some chopped pistachios but otherwise it turns into such a delicious dessert. It's time to make some homemade pasta. I'm so excited going over to my brother's tonight to celebrate his birthday. I prepped the pasta dough earlier because it needs at least 30 minutes if not a few hours to rest because you need it for about 10 minutes and so that really develops a lot of gluten that makes that beautiful luscious wonderful pasta chewy texture and so after kneading it it needs some time to be able to rest so it um, rolls out to be a beautiful pasta dough i did actually stick it in the fridge because it's been like about three hours three and a half hours since i made it so i'm bringing it back to room temperature now so i'm just waiting for the to not feel cold anymore and then the two pasta fillings i kept it so simple because that is the most authentic way in my opinion just like on pizza you only want like five or so less than five ingredients Never more than that. You'd want as minimal ingredients as possible in your ravioli filling so that you can taste all of them. And they're all super high quality. So gorgeous, delicious home milk ricotta, lemon and basil. And then this one has crispy pancetta because I had a lot of pancetta that I will be using tonight for the carbonara. So I just kind of used a little bit for the ravioli filling, black pepper and Parmesan, black pepper and Parmesan. I just kind of took a base filling, spread them apart. So I have them perfectly ready to go in these Ziploc baggies. So I'm just gonna cut it and fill each of the ravioli molds because I'm using my super, super special, amazing ravioli mold that I got for my birthday a month ago. My brother gave me these ravioli molds and now I'm you know, giving back with homemade ravioli for his dinner a month later. So Franco family loves some food. What can I say? So anyways, tonight's feast is super Italian because that is what we grew up eating, but I have to leave here in about two and a half hours. So I gotta make all of this food and prep it in two hours. So let's get started making some homemade ravioli.
imperfections. <laughs> I never thought I could use those two words together. Either I screw up on something or I get it pretty perfect. But these are so not perfect because these are the first time I've ever made them. But they are beautiful. These have to be the cutest pasta shapes in the whole entire world. I'm obsessed. And I think it's time to pack it up. Let's go. Next day, post family dinner night. I have to run some errands this morning. It's gonna be super rainy today. So I put on a cute outfit post workout. I did a horrible workout. It was one of those workouts where you're just like mentally not there, kind of just going through the motions. I have a billion things on my mind and I just like never got into the mood. At least I went and got the workout in, you know? I mean, sometimes. It's showing up. Is it giving 100% of your effort? Not always. I didn't get any sleep last night. Got home super late from the amazing dinner. So I woke up after like four hours of sleep, which is really fun. So we're moving, we're moving slow this morning, but you know what? I'm okay with at least moving. Sometimes, like I said, just you gotta show up. Am I giving it insane productivity and effort and all that? No, but every moment counts and I have to go pick up some things for my mom today. Mother's Day is on Sunday. My mom is my favorite person in the entire world, so she needs to feel incredibly special for Mother's Day. I also hit 16K this morning on YouTube. I have 16,000 zestful family members, and it's so rewarding. I am so, 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 so hard on myself. I'm like, I should be at 200K, I'm not a real YouTuber, unless I have like 200,000 subscribers, and you know, 16's not enough, and my growth has gone so up and down. Like, sometimes it's a lot of subscribers, sometimes I feel like YouTube doesn't even wanna show anyone my videos, and so these past few months have been quite a grind to get like YouTube to favor me. I hit 16 this morning, last night while I was sleeping. It's just a blessing. I just, I need to take a step back and stop comparing myself and remember like for where I am and what I'm doing, that's really good. To getting to 16K, I'm gonna go out for an aperitivo tonight. I have not caught up with one of my friends in a long time. There's this little wine house cute thing in my town that I love to support and sit outside and you know, drink a beautiful glass of crisp white wine during the summer, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna run errands, I'm gonna clean up the house because it's been un very much pushed off to task for the past few days. This is one of my biggest flaws, is cleaning. I either clean in a huge, big session, like I'm like deep cleaning and going through and scrubbing and throwing away and reorganizing, or I'm just letting the mess accumulate. I'm either or. I haven't tried to instill the habit of like 10 minutes before bed, do a nightly cleaning, or before you start your day, do 10 minutes of tidying up. I'm so terrible at that. And sometimes we have to accept who we are and our flaws and make them work for us. Like I know 
that that's who I am. And so today I've hit the amount that I can deal with kind of the mess around me and I'm just gonna clean it off. So running errands, cleaning, friendship, enjoying life. I'll worry about work tomorrow. I have so much work, it's kind of hard to breathe, but I'm gonna be very European today. <laughs> the work will be always waiting for me. I've hit my deadlines. There's just, of course, always more that I can do. Why I really turned on the camera is to talk about last night. So last night was chaotic. I always get so stressed out serving pasta to a crowd of people, like more than one person or two people, because pasta, especially carbonara, gets cold so quickly. So like, when someone's making pasta for you, be ready and sitting at the table because pasta gets so cold so quickly but it turned out fabulous was delicious and then i was stressed out also making the ravioli at the same time which probably i should not have done because it was just a lot of a lot of going on made the ravioli made the arugula salad the ravioli were in Incredible. So I think it's super important that I rolled out the pasta dough when I was making the homemade pasta dough to seven because the two layers of ravioli were so thick like obviously they still cooked but like my gripe with fresh pasta is you don't get that al dente texture and so the texture of the ravioli was delicious love love loved it would make it again would give myself more time to make it again less stress i'm trying to rush through it because they're so tiny and you have to do so many and the pasta dries out so you got to keep the sheets of pasta that you rolled out that you're not using while you fill you have to keep a damp paper towel over them but it was so fun i don't know how people host parties so elegantly and peacefully and calmly like i just cooked for three people well, four people if you include myself, last night. And I thought I had everything so prepped and ready to go, but timing is so important when you're cooking like at a dinner party. Either way, it was incredible. And let's talk about the tiramisu. Unreal, unreal. I'm gonna say that was probably the best tiramisu I've ever had. Classic recipe of just using eggs, not using any heavy cream. Turned out so incredible. It turned out incredible. Um, my brother even made the comment, which was funny, because he's a texture person, is like me too, when it comes to food. And never in his life did he say, I think I say something soggy is delicious, but there's something about tiramisu where it's like, that soggy texture is really good. It hits the spot. All the recipes turned out fabulous, and that always just feels so good. It's one thing to just cook my recipes and show them to you guys on video, but actually get to cook for my family and the people that I love and do the thing that I love for the people that I love is a true love language of mine. So that was just so utterly satisfying. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna put some jewelry on and some lipstick, make a nice coffee and get the heck out of here. So I know this vlog was another very random vlog. Just happy, joyful, zestful things. And I am just so grateful for you. Thank you so much for your support as always. I feel super creative and refreshed and ready to knock out some awesome recipe videos. So those will be coming soon. But in the meantime, I thought this was a really fun vlog to share and I really, really hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know your favorite part of the video or what recipe you liked most in this video or just what you're feeling very zestful about these days. I love hearing good things Things, happy things always open to feedback as well always but love to spread some zest wherever we can thank you again so 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 much for watching i really really hope you enjoyed and until next time i hope you create a very very zestful day ciao